Hey there, cats and kittens, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm happy to bring you issue number 118 in the collection, The Ventriloquist and Scarface. And this is a really cool issue, one of my favorite villains in Batman's rogues gallery, one of the most interesting as well. Uh, I fell in love with this character, where I'm sure many of you first fell in love with this character on the old animated series. For those of you who are aware of this character, that's probably where you first encountered him, was on the old Batman the Animated Series cartoon show, where he was featured on every season as, as near as I can remember, and was voiced by uh, George Zunza, who did a fantastic job in the fourth season of the animated series. Of course, all the characters got a slight redesign, and of course, Scarface and the Ventriloquist were no different, so there, of course, they are there. They went on to later appear in the new animated series that was simply titled The Batman, where they were voiced by the Simpsons legend Dan Castaneda, who voices Homer Simpson, among many others on that show. And really cool take on the character. The, there was a gun barrel actually in the puppet's mouth, and he went on later in the series to build this giant version of Scarface, so that was a pretty cool appearance. The villainous pair have also appeared outside of the animated realm in video games, most notably in Batman Arkham Asylum, which is an awesome game. Arnold Wesker can be found in a file in Arkham Asylum, his dossier basically, where he was just illustrated, and Scarface is actually in it a couple times. You can find him wandering around the mansion in Arkham. He's in a display case labeled Scarface. And then later on in the game, there's a section where the Joker is actually puppeting Scarface and doing his voice. So, of course, Scarface was voiced by the legendary Mark Hamill, who also played the Joker in all those video games, save for uh, Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, so, if you know him, that's probably where you know him from. For those of you who are unaware of this really scary guy. That's of course why we have the magazine, which we'll take a look at first, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about the ventriloquist, also known as Arnold Wesker, and his puppet Scarface. And then, we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't know if I should say figure or figures, I guess it just depends on what you're looking for, but I really like this guy. A fantastic piece in the collection. I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy. Issue number 118 in the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, The Ventriloquist, and Scarface. First up, the character section. discover Arnold Wesker was orphaned at an extremely young age after his parents were killed in a head-on collision with a big rig that was carrying dummies to a department store. This trauma caused Arnold to develop a multiple personality disorder, so the seemingly meek and harmless character was, in reality, very violent and filled with rage. This violent temper bubbled to the surface one night after Wesker got into a barroom brawl and stabbed a man to death in brutal fashion. Arnold was sentenced to serve life in prison at Blackgate Penitentiary. His cellmate at Blackgate was a brutal murderer named Donegan, who as a hobby had taken up ventriloquism and carved a dummy out of wood made from Blackgate's infamous gallows tree. Arnold became obsessed with Donegan's dummy, despite numerous warnings from Donegan that he would murder Arnold if he came near the ventriloquist stall. After swearing that the dummy was talking to him, Arnold finally succumbed, picked up the dummy, and dispatched Donegan in violent fashion. During the scuffle, Donegan managed to scar the dummy's face before Wesker escaped from Blackgate Penitentiary through a tunnel that Donegan had been digging for months. The magazine also briefly mentions one of the first times that the Dark Knight detective encountered Scarface when Batman was investigating a drug that the dummy was pushing in Gotham, known as Fever. 
It also touches on how Scarface is able to influence Wesker from beyond the grave and has been rebuilt by Arnold on many different occasions. After Arnold was released from Blackgate for the final time, he temporarily had a sock puppet named Socko who helped him retrieve Scarface. That is until Wesker was arrested once more and was sentenced this time to serve at Arkham Asylum. The therapist at Arkham Asylum decided the best way for Wesker to break away from his criminal alter ego was for him to literally burn the Scarface puppet in a funeral pyre. Wesker enjoyed some success for a little while as a stand-up ventriloquist with his new dummy named Lola, until he insulted the wrong person, that being the Penguin, who managed to find the remains of Scarface, which brought the evil alter ego back out of Arnold Wesker. Scarface once again went on a quest to take over the criminal underworld of Gotham City and had a personal grudge against the Penguin, which was fueled by Arnold Wesker. The magazine also gives us a quick glimpse into his private life when we discover that Arnold, while he was still sane, planned on marrying a woman that he had met and having a family with her before the Penguin ruined all that by bringing Scarface back into his life. The last couple pages bring us up to speed with the character, at least at the time of this publication. It's revealed that after Arnold Wesker's murder, Scarface fell into the hands of a woman known as Peyton Riley. Peyton was the heir to a criminal underworld whose husband and whole family were brutally murdered in front of her. She had also been shot in the head and was left for dead. As she tried to stumble away from the murder scene, she found the remains of Arnold Wesker and heard the Scarface doll speaking to her. After months of recuperation and repairing the Scarface doll, Peyton emerged as the new ventriloquist with Scarface at her side, bound and determined to take revenge on the gangsters that had so destroyed her life and to rule the criminal underworld of Gotham. Peyton and Scarface were eventually apprehended and were sentenced to serve time off-world on the penal planet called Salvation Run. While back on Earth, the original ventriloquist Arnold Wesker was resurrected from the dead and turned into an evil zombie by the Black Lantern Corps. Next, we look at a couple of Ventriloquist's classic stories. First, we look at Batman Scarface, a cyber drama. This story really is a character study of the Ventriloquist, Arnold Wesker, and it asks the question, is this man caught in the grip of some sort of psychosis? Or is Scarface, the dummy, actually alive? A piece of wood made from this hangman's tree that is possessed by the evil spirits of 313 hanged men who have turned Arnold Wesker into a reluctant killer. It's a really awesome story that asks a lot of questions and lets you draw your own conclusions. And the art style I find to be very unique. It's a cool story worth checking out. We also have Batman Broken City. This is a crime noir thriller of a story that looks at Gotham City and asks, is the city inherently evil and dark or has it been made that way by the occupants that reside there? It opens with Batman investigating the murder of a pregnant woman, and as he's unraveling this 
mystery, he is drawn deeper and deeper into the underworld of Gotham City. Eventually, he is led to the doorstep of the Ventriloquist and Scarface, who have a very important role in the story to play that I really don't want to share with you because it'll spoil everything. I definitely recommend checking this one out. It is gritty and dark and everything I think a Batman comic book should be. Ventriloquist and Scarface's Friends and Foes section features, of course, Batman, one-time ventriloquist Peyton Riley, and the Penguin. Lastly, the iconography section looks at some of the other mad mannequins in the DCU. It first talks about a heroic ventriloquist dummy that sprang to life after its owner was killed during World War II. The dummy went on to inspire heroes like Sergeant Rock and his Easy Company. It goes on to mention the diminutive assassin and crime lord known as the Dummy, the Ragdoll, a psychotic criminal who uses his contortionistic abilities in his crimes, violent mobster Ducky McLaren, who was helpless without his childhood rubber ducky toy by his side, and the misunderstood hero known as Brother Power, the Geek, an abandoned Taylor's mannequin who was recycled by runaways and hippies and was brought to supernatural life by a stray bolt of lightning. And here we have the Ventriloquist and Scarface, also known as Arnold Wesker and Scarface. Uh, it's a really nice looking figure, as disappointing as Wonder Girl was last issue, as really, I'll just say it, awful as she was, this guy sort of bounces back from that awfulness. This is a really nice looking figure. It's clean. There's very few issues I have with it. Just a couple of little minor things I'm going to point out in a little bit here. But just everything about him I feel screams Ventriloquist and Scarface. It looks just like I think Wesker should look. I, I like that they made him, you know, the aged look. They gave him the glasses, the, the baldness. Well, the sort of baldness. And then Scarface is just great. He's very tiny. He looks like a Ventriloquist dummy. His face is nicely sculpted. He looks kind of wooden. And there are all sorts of little details on him that I'm going to point out in a minute here, all the way down to Wesker's shoes, which have a little W's painted on them, very nice, like they're monogrammed, sort of. Uh, it's it's great. I like him a lot. I'm very happy with him. This is the final Batman figure in the collection, too, the final villain in the rogues gallery, and I feel they really go out on a high note for the Batman series, so well done. Congratulations to them. I'm going to talk a little bit more about all the good on this guy, and of course the few issues I have with him in the next section. In just a moment. Ventriloquist stands atop the classic DC logo, and the underside of the base features his name in multiple languages and his serial number. And so you can compare, here he is standing alongside the Dark Knight himself, Batman, and in a group shot with all of the other members of the Batman's rogues gallery that have been released by Eagle Moss. The Ventriloquist and Scarface is are a really nice figure. I'm very happy with this guy. Very little wrong with it, although there is something that I really have a major problem with. I'll get to that, though. Overall, the good by far outweighs the bad, and it's a great way for the final Batman's rogues villain to be captured in this collection. Starting with the good, I'm very pleased with the pose. I think it captures the character perfectly. The paint is clean, the sculpt is nice, textures are great, lots of fine details all over this guy, including, well, everything, you'll see. Starting at the base, the shoes are fantastic. They're a nice glossy black, as though he's taken his time and been meticulous about them. The white W's on the top are a nice touch. I'm not sure if those are supposed to be like a monogram with the W for Wesker, or if it's supposed to be a stitching on the shoe. Either way, I really dig it. The pants that Wesker is wearing are perfect yet again. A, a nice sort of glossy black, but the texturing on the pants is nice. They look like a fabric, as though maybe they're a nice silk or something like that, and they look loose and baggy on him. Uh, also love the shoes and the pants on Scarface. They're really nice. I like the black shoes with the white spats. The pants have great texturing and paint de details on there so you can denote all the wrinkles and things on the pants. Moving up his body, of course, he's wearing that tuxedo. Very gangster looking tuxedo. Love the rose on his lapel, the black shirt with the white tie and that blue suit. 
Love his left hand. It's so tiny when you compare it to Wesker's left hand, which is, again, very subtle. He He's a very proper guy, like a butler or something like that. The suit that he's wearing is nice, that black, glossy, textured suit with the white shirt and the bow tie. Uh, the greatest detail on this guy coming around here is both Wesker's right arm and Scarface's right arm. It's the same hand. You can see Wesker's arm goes through Scarface's sleeve and becomes the hand that's holding on to that Tommy gun. It's such a subtle but such a fantastic detail to have on here. The Tommy gun is, again, a phenomenal piece. It has a metallic gunmetal gray. The handle on the front of the gun, it's got a nice wood texture to it. Fine detailing on all of the bits and pieces of that, that Tommy gun that he's holding. That brings us to Scarface's head sculpt. It looks exactly as I think Scarface should look. He has that very strong jaw, the big exaggerated teeth. Even his eyes are detailed. They're sunken in, but there are obvious pupils and eyeballs, and he just has this really evil grimace on his face. And it has a slightly wooden texture to that flesh tone, too. It looks like it's painted on. It's very nice. I like it. And the fedora, of course, is perfect. It's exactly like something Scarface would wear. That brings us finally to Wesker's head sculpt. And it, again, captures the character perfectly. The bow tie, that look on his face, the slightly furrowed brow, his glasses. I like how they you can't see his eyes behind them because most of the time in the comic books you couldn't see his eyes it was all about scarface his hair the the baldness and just that crown of a hairline and it's long and gray and nicely textured it's very nice i really love this character i'm very very pleased with with wesker and scarface here on to the bad the first thing is just something physically wrong with mine. The paint bleeds on the back of his neck. The gray of his hair bleeds down into the collar of his shirt. It's not major. You really don't see it unless you're looking hard on the back. And it's only mine. I'm sure most are much cleaner, but overall the paint is very clean. The biggest problem I have with this figure is Scarface is missing the scar on his face. It sort of goes without saying. There's nothing there. They could have even just painted a jagged line on there and I would have been happy, but I don't see why they couldn't have just carved a little scratch on his his right cheek, but you can see it's on neither cheek. It's sort of a major thing. I, I tend to also forgive it because this guy is just so superb overall, really. Finally, the ugly. The only thing to really watch out for on this guy, I think, is obvious. The Tommy gun in Scarface's right hand. At the barrel of the gun there, it's very thin, easy to bend, easy to break. If you can check before you purchase, I recommend doing so. Overall, I'm thrilled with this character. I think he is very, very nice. Uh, he's not perfect because Scarface is missing the scar on his face, but otherwise, I, I love this character. I'm so glad he was included in the line. And it really, again, just shows how disappointing Wonder Girl was from the previous issue when you look at her compared to him. There's so much detail, so much clean paint, so much fine sculpting going on with him. It could have been done on her, and it just boggles my mind. He also kind of brings up how poorly the Mad Hatter was done for me on a level. I sort of compare the two of them. They're kind of the quirkier characters. The Ventriloquist is just perfect, whereas there were some problems, really, really major problems I had with Mad Hatter. And it just goes to show they could have fixed that easily. I love this guy. If you're a fan of Batman, if you're a fan of his rogues gallery, I think you owe it to yourself to pick this guy up. There's so many great things going on here. And another good reason to pick him up is he's the final villain in Batman is Rogue's Gallery to be included in this series. So there it is, everybody. There's your nice, big, huge group shot of all the villains from the DC Eagle Moss collection, all the lead figures. Uh, every single one of them, all the special editions, I tried to include them all. I think the only one you could argue I didn't put in there is Red Hood, but I consider him to be a hero now because he more or less is in the comic books. Uh, a great series, a great way to go out with the ventriloquist and Scarface. I highly recommend him if you love Batman and his villains. He's one you should most definitely include in your collection. And I hope you've been impressed with my review here of the ventriloquist and Scarface. Please stay tuned for a quick teaser trailer of the next figure in the collection. It's the final special edition in the series. Uh, it's a villain, a villainess. We're going out with a villainess, which I love. The bad girls are always fun. And she's a big one. Let me just put it that way. Please stay tuned for that quick teaser. As always, I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. Jay to his friends. Thanks for watching.